And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine stream and another exciting episode of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and this is episode 108, I believe, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And I do believe it is. So, uh, <laughs> so I had to check my show notes. And I do have show notes. They're right here. I don't always follow them. Uh, I, I follow them somewhat, but I don't always follow them because this show isn't about... Don't, it's not about me. It's about the wine somewhat, but this is really about you and me getting together on a Saturday night and having a great time. And I know I say that every week, but I do mean that. So get in the chats, talk to me, tell me how your week is going, how your week went, how your weekend's going, and uh, what you're up to. Tell me what you're drinking, what you're not drinking, what you'd like to be drinking, or what you'd like to see me drinking. And if I can afford a bottle of it, I'll see if I can get it and drink it too. You know, of course, we are live on uh, Facebook, on the Facebook page is Drink With Rick, We're, uh, and that's publicly available. We're live on YouTube, YouTube is Drink With Rick. Also live on Twitch, Twitch is Drink With Rick 1, Drink With Rick and the number 1. Also on Twitter, Twitter is at Drink With Rick. Now, we're also live on the website at drinkwithrick.com. Now, I don't have a chat going there. I have a chat going the other platforms. I don't have one going there, but if you open up that post for the live feed or the live show that's being posted there you'll see a comment box type your uh, comments in the comment box and i will respond in kind i may not get it right away but i'll respond at some point in kind appreciate it and of course the podcast goes out monday nights monday nights at 10 p.m eastern time that's uh 10 p.m eastern uh, actually, it's uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time because we're on Daylight Time right now, right? That's right. So you can listen to it at 10 p.m. on Monday nights. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Android, Stitcher Radio, Blueberry.com, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Amazon Music, and PodcastIndex.org. Or by email, if you click on the button, if you go to the website, drinkwithrick.com, click on the subscribe button. Open up that subscribe page. Click on subscribe by email. If you put in your email address, just the email address, you'll get the latest episode of the podcast as soon as it drops on Monday nights at 10 p.m. And no salesman will call. This is just so you can subscribe to the podcast and no other reason than that. Okay? So if you're concerned about the privacy uh, don't be that that, that should be should be relatively safe there uh, as far as that's concerned okay uh, I've got a wine that we're going to try tonight this is going to be an Italian wine I have some foods to pair it with that are kind of Italian foods some of them are anyway <laughs> so we're looking forward to trying it out this is a wine that was recommended to me by my good folks at wine store my good friends at wine store wine store-online.com we're going to be learning a little bit more about that wine in just a second but before we get there let's check out the chats let's see who we have in the chats uh it's kind of quiet on facebook right now and i did notice someone in twitch twitch beast on gaming's in the chat on twitch and Beast on Gaming, it's good to see you. It's always good to see you. And Beast on Gaming says, finally made one of these in time. Well, you're here. You're right on time, uh, right on schedule. Stick around. We're going to have some fun. And get in the chat. And this is what's going to happen tonight. Tonight, I'm going to open and pour this wine, taste it, review it, pair it with some food. We'll do some, we'll toast some birthdays. We'll toast, I've got a, a congratulatory post as well. We're going to post, uh, well, what's going, what else are going to do? Oh, we're going to toast National Days, of course. And we're also going to, uh, we're also going to do a giveaway. If we get enough people in the chat, if people get in the chat and start participating, I'm going to randomly give away a book that I uh, reviewed last week. I reviewed this book last week called Infinite Giving. It's a nice little book, and I'm going, I want to give one away. I really want to give one away because I believe in infinite giving, and that's what this book is about. So please... Participate in the chat. Tell me how you're doing, and uh, I'll randomly give one away to some lucky winner in the chat. Of course, we don't give if, if we don't get enough participation in the chat. If everybody's too quiet, I know we have people watching. Get in the chat. Talk to me in the chat. Talk to me, because like I said, the show is about you and me together. It's it's us. You make the show. You make this show happen. It's not me by myself. Okay. I can't carry the show on my own. Well, I could. I could talk all night, but <laughs> you really don't want that. Trust me, you don't want that. <laughs> so uh, aside from that, I also want to tell you about a wine giveaway. 
someone is giving away a free bottle of wine and you may have a chance to win a free bottle of wine. Not from me, this is a third party, but I want to tell you all about it later on. So stick around, we're going to have some fun. Let me go ahead and check the chats one more time, see what we've got going on. Quiet on Facebook once again, and uh, YouTube is kind of quiet, and Twitch. Uh, Bits on Gaming is here, and let's see, what else we got going on on... Uh, I don't really know how this chat things works on. They just switch things over on Twitter a little bit, and supposedly there's a chat here, but I'm really not sure what uh, where that's all. I think it's probably happening on Periscope. Uh, they moved everything from Periscope to Twitter Studio, Twitter Media Studio, and I'm still trying to figure that thing out. Uh, I mean, it's not complicated. It's just, you know, I just sort of have to sort out how I'm going to organize this and how it works. But anyway, so that's what I've got going on. Let me see if I can pull up any uh, tweets, any responses in the tweets. Maybe that's what I got here. And uh, if you are uh, watching on Twitter, please tweet me there and uh, tell me how you're doing. Once again, we could have a chance, you could have a chance to win a book. This is not the dad joke book, okay? This is a different book, but it's still a good book, okay? So if you want to, if you've won a dad joke book in the past, uh, this is a different book to add to your library, your library from Drink with Rick, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the wine. I'm just checking all the chats one more time. It looks a little bit quiet there. I'm going to keep an eye on these chats tonight. I've got to. And uh, this is the wine that we're going to be drinking. Let me show it to you. This is a Lang Rosso. This is a Luigi Giordano. Luigi Giordano. It's a Lang Rosso 2019. It's a red wine. It is a product of Italy. And uh, it's a state bottled. Uh, I've, I've got some information on this wine and, and should be some, uh, some good stuff here. I'll, I'll relay it to you when I open the bottle. Here's the back of the wine. This is what we're looking at in the back. Interesting. It says the Piedmont guy. It just says the Piedmont guy, and that's what uh, he's known for. The bottler is known. Uh, I guess that's what his what he's called. He's called the Piedmont guy. So uh, this is a 2019. Not a whole lot on here, but you can go to www.thepiedmontguy.com get for more information. They have some text sheets on this wine. Going back to the front of the bottle, most of the information is on the front of the bottle. It is, says it is a state bottled by Azienda Agricola Luigi Giordano. It's a Barbaresco Italia prodotto in Italia, in Italy. Um, and there is 13% alcohol by volume, 13% ABV, in this 750 milliliter bottle of wine. So that's what we're looking at here tonight. And that's what we're going to be opening up to drink tonight. And... Uh, well, let's let me check the chat one more time before I start opening this wine up. Okay, quiet on the quiet in the chat, right? Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and open this bottle of wine since I seem to uh, have plenty of time to do so at the moment. And I'm going to use my foil cutter here. This is actually from the same gift set that my wife gave me as a gift over the holidays. So I've got that open. Very easy, easy peasy. Well, I don't know where that, that where did that uh, originate from? Easy peasy. Uh, just because it rhymes, I don't know. Anyway, so here is the the uh, cork screw, the mechanical cork screw. And we'll just pull it right out. It comes right out easily. Yeah, wow, this is nice. And a nice healthy pop, too. I'll set that aside so I can remove El Corque later. The cork later. Don't mind me. I'm just, you know, I've I've been watching Mission Impossible, the old episodes of Mission Impossible, the TV series of my wife, and I, I found out some interesting trivia about that show, uh, particularly about the the foreign countries they go to and in the the the, the um, languages and the in the uh, how should I say that what they the words that they use on that show for the for the foreign languages. Uh, interesting. So I'll, I'll talk about it later. It's not the time. Now, this is a wine that is actually chilled right now. This is a wine that needs to be chilled. It's actually chilled right now because it's in a fridge. And we're going to find out a little bit more about this wine in just a moment. But uh, I do have my handy... I do have my handy aerator. 
This is from the Veneto Wine Lover set. It's available on Amazon.com for $19.99. At least last a ton of check. You know, I better make sure that's all good. Last week it fell down in the bottle. Remember that? If you remember in our last episode, Rick inadvertently dropped the end of this device down into the bottle. And it affected the entire show. All right, so I've got it in there. It looks pretty firm in there. It sits in there. And, of course, to hold the grapes, the, uh, the wine, I have my trusty, this is my Galway Genuine Irish Crystal Glass from Ireland, given to me by my employers at buy2wayradios.com. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and pour a little bit of this wine into the bottle. Oh wow, that's a very interesting, very interesting color. That's a that's an interesting color, isn't it? Very interesting color. We'll find out what this is all about uh, in just a moment. Let's check out. Well, let me tell, tell you what. Let's check out the uh, chats for just a moment. See who's straggling in. I'm trying to keep laser focused on all these chats. Okay, I'm trying to stay on top of them. And nothing on Twitter. I don't know how this thing's working out on Twitter. I really don't. If you're on Twitter, let me know if you can see and hear me and how that works out. If it's, if it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell. All right. So let's find out about the, the, more about this wine. Now, I pulled up a text sheet on it and I pulled out some information. I, went, I actually went to the Piedmont Guy website, the PiedmontGuy.com, and learned a little bit about Luigi Giordano. And he he's from, um, uh, Barbaresco, Barbaresco's Village Center, and uh, there's stone's throw, according to the website, it's a stone's throw from Barbaresco Village Center. The winery and its vineyards uh, were founded by Giovanni Giordano in the 1930s. And, uh, and this came during a difficult time uh, with uh, growing and, and selling grapes and making wine back there. That, that was in the height of the Great Depression in the U.S., and of course the, the whole world felt that somewhat. Uh, he decided to vinify his own grapes in 1960, and it's, uh, it's now a fourth-generation winery. I'm reading this from their website there at thepiedmontguy.com. And this, apparently, they have a, a hands-off style of winemaking, uh, and it is the only single vineyard crew of its kind on the market. Okay. Very, very interesting. So I pulled up a text sheet on it, and this is what I found out. Uh, this is um, traditional grape selection during the harvest and blending of fruit from vineyards situated with the Barbaresco zone. And the vinification part of it is uh, after a soft pressing and crushing of the grapes, the fermentation develops at a controlled temperature and is accompanied by a maceration period of 8 to 10 days. Uh, in this whole period, daily pumping are performed. I'm reading this directly from the text sheet now. This is from the text sheet on this wine. Uh, after the racking and the initial period of clarification, the wine matures for three to four months in oak casks, then is refined in bottles for at least three months. And it has kind of a ruby color, and it does, doesn't it? It really does have a, a nice, clear ruby color to it. It does. Wow, this is uh, yeah, it, it's a nice look. It's a nice color to it. It says to serve in uh, goblets of medium size at the temperature of fifteen to sixteen degrees Celsius. Now, that would come out to fifty nine to sixty degrees Fahrenheit. I know because I, I did the conversion. <laughs> Thank you, Google, <laughs> translate or conversion process. Okay, and. Uh, I did. I chilled this wine first. So this wine has been chilled to about 60, 60 or so degrees. It's been sitting out here for the last 15 minutes, so it's probably warming up again. But they recommend that it be chilled. So I did. You know, usually I don't do that. But this time I thought ahead, a little bit ahead, and chilled it. So we've got a chilled wine, and it's chilled in the glass. So we're looking forward to trying this out. And it's supposedly it works. This is what the match is. Uh, it says to match with plates of medium structure, especially the appetizers of meat, long pasta dishes, that would be spaghetti and, and uh, things like that, and filled with classic condiments. 
like meat sauce, butter, and sage, etc., although it can be used during the entire meal. It is also great for informal snacks with sandwiches and teasers at any hour of the day. And this is their recommendation from their tech sheet, which is pretty cool. I like that. All right, so I checked around online. I checked around online a little bit. And uh, Wine Store, and this is where I purchased it from, Wine Store uh, recommends that it goes with, uh, you know, snacks and appetizers or a romantic evening. And they're saying that's medium bodied. It, it actually looks a, it actually looks light bodied to me, somewhat light to medium, more light bodied than medium bodied. And um, what do we have here on? I had it up here on. Ah, on Vivino. Vivino gives it a 4.0 out of five star rating for the 2019 vintage, and it says this vintage rates better than any other year for this wine. And they also say it's among the top 4% of all wines in the world. The top 4% of all wines in the world. Looking forward to checking this out. Well, what I did do, aside from that, is I checked the prices on it. I went to a couple places. Wine Library had it for $15.99 for the, for the 2019 vintage, $15.99. Uh, it lists for $22.99. Uh, I don't know if that list prices... As, uh, well, you know what, Vivino has it for $20, for straight flat $20, Vivino, Vivino has it listed. And they said at $20, according to Vivino's site, it says the $20 is the average online price for uh, online, you know, out and about from external shops for this wine. So it's an average about $20 a bottle of wine. I will tell you what I paid for it. I paid because I have the receipt right here in my hand. I paid... For this Luigi, Luigi Giordano Langa, is that what it's pronounced? Langa Rosa. Uh, $14.99. $14.99 is what I paid for it. And uh, according to the wine store, I guess that's the that's the regular price, $14.99. So that's what we're, we're going to taste it with. Now, I'm going to check this wine out in just a moment. Let me check the chats one more time and see what we have going on in the chat, if anything. And my wife, my lovely wife, Chi, is in the chat on Facebook. She says, hello, and right back at you, Chi. Thank you. Thank you for the dish. Oh, you know, I forgot. I know what she's doing. She's reminding me. This is what we're going to pair it with tonight, folks. It's on camera three. This is what we're pairing it tonight. Tonight we have uh, we have a steak, a really nice, well, was this a, a T-bone? It was a T-bone, wasn't it, Chi? It was a leftovers from last night. It was quite good, actually. Uh, T-bone steak, I think, is what it was, or porterhouse, something like along those lines. And we have a couple of slices of pizza. We have uh, this pizza came from Brooklyn Pizza that's in Charlotte here, a local, local pizza place. Pizza is very good, by the way. Uh, we have a pizza with uh, hamburger, uh, hamburger meat on it. That's uh, uh, beef on the pizza. And then we have a little slice of pizza with black olives. So... That should be interesting to try. Also, we have the cheeses, of course. We have the uh, we have a cheddar here, and we have the uh, cheddar uh, Trader Joe's double cream gouda that I like so much. And we have this. This is the uh, Toscano. This is the Toscano with uh, creamy uh, Syrah. That was what well, we tried that last week. As a matter of fact, with the Syrah, and it was quite good. It was perfect match. And maybe that's because the Syrah was in it. And there was Syrah in it supposedly, and. Uh, and maybe it worked out well because we had a Syrah wine last week, so it went really well. Now, this in the middle is a nice little salad that my wife, Chi, made. She invented this, and it has cucumber in it and radishes and some other things. And it's quite good. It is quite good. And uh, I had some of that last night with dinner, and I really, I really, really enjoyed that. That cheese, uh, that cheese, the um, <laughs> salad. I enjoy the cheese too, <laughs> the salad. I, I really enjoyed that. It was very, very, very good. Very good. <clears throat> so we're going to check this out. Let me uh, switch over to, let me check the chats one more time to see because I, I, I didn't check Twitch the last couple of minutes. All right. And uh, nothing else going on. YouTube's quiet. That's okay. That's okay. People are watching, but it's quiet. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the wine. We're going to taste this wine here. We're going to give it a whiff and give it a taste and let's see what it's like. Because I've had, I've given it a couple of minutes to open up. Very cherry. 
Very cherry, very cherry. Raspberry, a little bit of raspberry, but cherry. It's what I smell. Maybe it's a mix of both, I think, is what it was. Can't really, can't really pick out much of anything else in there, but let's give it a taste. Mmm. I was getting a whiff of it as it was going down, and it was a little more complex than that. <clears throat> it was a little bit of raspberry and cherry. It was a lot of cherry, but it was almost like a maraschino cherry taste. You know the maraschino, the red maraschino cherries that you put on top of the, the ice creams? It wasn't just like regular cherry. It, 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 it's, it was almost like a maraschino cherry. Very interesting. Let me try that again. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it, the cherry is really pronounced in here, and it's it's not. I've heard people say that um, it's a little bit uh, earthy. I'm not getting a lot of earthy. I'm getting a little bit slight earthiness to it, but not a lot. And it's um, it's kind of medium. <clears throat> I want to say it's not really that. It does have a long finish. It does have a long finish, and as the, as it goes down, it's a little bit on the oaky side. I'm getting a little bit more oak in it. Um, but, and maybe, maybe a little, maybe a little mushroomy, maybe just a little bit, but not that much. But when I, uh, when I had it in my mouth, it really did not, some people were saying that this is kind of a bold wine. I'm not really getting that. I, it's kind of a medium. It, this is very a nice ruby complexion, but it's, it looks lighter than what, what uh, some people are saying, what the reviews are saying, what what it had on wine store, they said it was. Uh, excuse me, it, it was not. It's, it's it seems a light body to me. It really does, and it's there's some tannin in it. There is tannin in it, so it's it's fairly tannic, and it's a very very dry. This is a very dry wine, very dry. But it is quite an easy wine to drink. <clears throat> no, I, I'm I pretty sure this is a light bodied wine. I wouldn't call this a, a medium or heavy bodied wine, and, and I don't think it's that bold. Uh, I think it's kind of a medium, but it's it's a very light complexion. It's I don't know, it's complex. <laughs> There's a lot going on here in this wine, but I'm mostly getting cherry notes. And it's quite good. It's quite good. This is a very easy wine to drink. And I can see why they would say drink it with a sandwich or appetizers. I think this is a wine that will go very, very well with a lot of different appetizers. I haven't made in my mind. They're saying it's a medium. It, it, it looks, it's light body to me. And it kind of, it, it kind of tastes light going down. It's, it's not that heavy. Of a, it's not that bold of a wine. Uh, to me, I mean, you know, maybe, maybe some, for some people they think it's pretty bold, but I'm not. Now, I've had some bold wine, so I'm used to bold. And maybe for my palate, maybe this isn't anywhere close to bold. And, and it, it, maybe that's just my palate, I guess. I don't know. So let's uh, check the chat. I'm grabbing the wrong mouse here. Let me check the chat one more time and uh, see what we've got going on. Facebook. Oh, sure, it's in the chat, uh, or Kathy, Kathy and Sherrod, Kathy and Sherrod in the chat, and it's great to see you. Kathy and Sherrod say, we enjoyed a good bit of red wine when we visited Italy 30 plus years ago. You know, uh, that is, uh, that's pretty awesome. So you, you must have really enjoyed your Italy visit. They have a lot of great wine and food there from what I've been told. I have never visited Italy. Of course, being, you know, as you know, I'm Italian, I'm part Italian, half of me is Italian. My dad's half, and my mom, my mom's half, uh, is, is 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 your side of the family. <laughs> my dad's half is Italian from from the old country, from Italy. And uh, one of these days, uh, I'm, one of these days, I, I'm probably going to go go check out Italy. Here, I've never been. I've, uh, other members of my family have. Uh, at least one of my brothers has been there, and my dad's been there, and uh, I think uh, one of my sisters has been there, and they've all enjoyed it. So I might find myself there too one of these days. I might. That would be a fun thing to do, tour Italy, around Italy, and tour the wineries and everything else. 
By the way, uh, Sharon, Kathy, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing fine. Please stick around. Stick around for the wine stream because I want to give away a book tonight. And uh, I'm going to randomly give it away to somebody. Somebody in the chat is going to win a book. So we'll see. Uh, well, uh, it might be you. You know, we'll see. <laughs> Hang around. We're going to have some fun anyway. So please, please get in the chat and participate. So uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, we're going to pair it with some foods in just a minute. And uh, Tom Antio is in the chat. Tom Antio, hi. How you doing? That, glad to see you in the chat, of course. And uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, okay. So we're about to pair it with some food. <laughs> My train of thought got derailed there pretty, pretty quickly. All right, so this is, once again, this is what we're pairing it with. Let me go back to camera three. Uh, this is what we're pairing it with tonight. So we're going to try it first. I'm going to pour some more wine. I have to pour some more wine. We're going to try it first with the steak. I have heard, I've been told that this goes good with steak. So we're going to try it with the, we're going to try it with the steak. So we'll see how it goes. That's the steak. Mm. And what a good steak it is. Oh, this is a, you know, they say leftovers are better. I tend to agree. People wonder why sometimes leftovers taste better than the, the, when the meal's first made. My wife set me straight and told me why. I'll tell you in a minute. Mm. That's a really good steak. It it kind of it's interesting because the cherry flavor adds to the smokiness because this was uh, grilled to the grilled flavor of the steak somewhat to make it very interesting mix. <clears throat> it's good. It's very good actually, um, but it's not what I expected for the taste. It brings out a little more. When they were talking about it being uh, a little leathery and a little, uh, uh, what was saying, you know, there is smokiness in here, but when they were talking about being a little bit on the on the leathery side uh, before, I think this is bringing out that leathery taste. I think that that uh, steak brings out the leathery taste in this wine. So. Uh, that, uh, no, that's not bad. That's not bad. It looks good. I don't have any crackers tonight. So I'll clear the palate with some water. <clears throat> Got the water here. Clear the palate with. And I still have wine in the glass. So I'll go ahead and try it with the pizza. Now the first thing, I'm going to try it. And this is what we're looking at here. This is the, um, <clears throat> I'll try it with the pizza with the beef on it first. <clears throat> I'm trying with pizza with uh, the, the beef on it first, and we're going to the cheese, beef and cheese. Hmm. And plenty of gluten. So it's good, very good pizza, by the way. Hmm. Oh yeah, works pretty well with the pizza with the beef on it. <clears throat> We're going to clear the palate one more time. We're going to try it with the with the olives. So okay, so let's try it with the olives here. This is one with all olive, black olives. And some people don't like black olives. They prefer green. Some people don't like green olives. They prefer black olives. Some people don't like olives at all. I happen to like olives. Mm. I like both kinds, but I prefer green olives, actually. I know. Mm. Oh, yeah. It goes very nicely with the pizza with the olives on it. I like that. Mm -hmm. It goes very nicely with that. We'll pour a little bit more of the wine here. Clear the palate one more time. We'll try it with the cheeses next. Before I do that, let me check the chat one more time. See what's going on in the chat. <clears throat> Sherrod says, uh, I'm just, can I just say Sherrod? Or Kathy and Sherrod? Sherrod and Kathy? <laughs> uh, Sherrod says, I can't pronounce all of that. Uh, you know, that that's the thing about this wine. I... Uh, 
Luigi Giordano Langaroso. 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 I guess that's how it's pronounced. Uh, let's see what's going on on Twitch. Kind of quiet on Facebook. Uh, not Facebook. Uh, what's the thing? Oh, YouTube. <laughs> okay. Let's hang around on, on Facebook for a few minutes while I try it with this. I'm going to try it with the cheeses. I'm going to try it with this cheddar first. This I think this is from Trader Joe's, by the way. So we're going to try it with cheddar. Nice cheddar, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Trader Joe's cheddar, I believe. Okay. I can see why they recommend this with appetizers because it does go very well with a lot of appetizers and, and any appetizer with cheese in it, like the pizza, I think this is going to, this is going to go pretty well with. I think so. We're going to try it now with the, well, let me clear the palate one more time. <clears throat> okay, and we're going to try it with the Toscano. This is the Toscano, Toscano with creamy Syrah. Toscano with creamy Syrah. Mm. And this is a very good cheese, by the way. We really enjoyed this cheese last week, and we had it with a Syrah wine. Mm. Wow, another good pairing. Works very well with the Toscano cheese. I like that. Very, I like that very much. I think this is a good all-around wine to drink with, uh, with a lot of these foods. All right, so we're going to go back here and try it one more time. We're going to try it with the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. Of course, the Double Cream Gouda. <clears throat> Never had a miss yet. So Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. Creamy, creamy as ever. <clears throat> and it, it's just that this wine is so light. Um, I think it, it, ma it matches up pretty well. But um, I don't think it's like one of those wow kind of moments. It's, it, it works well. It works well. It, it does win. But it's not one of those wow things where the cheese actually blends with the wine, the wine with the cheese, and they all merge together and come out as one, <laughs> you know, and, and the taste. <laughs> they'll come out as one <laughs> yeah, okay i'm not going there all right sorry uh yeah they they blend together as one okay uh this is kind of that you can they're separate tastes and and they go pretty well together i think that's that's how we'll, we'll leave it at that okay so we're going to go back i'm going to clear the palette one more time and we're going to go back and this time we're going to try it with my wife's well, this this salad is really good. She taped it to the. There we go. Let's uh, go back to the camera here. Whoop. <clears throat> okay, here's the camera. Now this is an interesting mix because it has cucumber, it has radish, it has tomatoes, and I don't know. Gee, what was what did you put in here for for um, it has seasoning in here? I'm not sure what the seasoning is. This is really, really nice looking, and it's really good. This goes great with steak, by the way. Steak and potatoes and this for a salad. And it's pretty awesome. Mm. Mm. Very good. Will it work with the wine? We'll find out. Mmm. <clears throat> mmm. Oh, yeah. Now, there is like a little vinegar, a little, you know, it's a little uh, vinegar dressing of some sort in here. I'm not sure what you put in it, Chi. This is her own recipe, by the way. But <clears throat> it really brings out that flavor. This wine brings out that flavor, kind of magnifies it somewhat. Very good. I'm going to try just a little bit more of this just because uh, it's in front of me and I can. I have to be careful. I can really eat this all up. I basically almost did last night. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, very good. <clears throat> very, very good. Um, I'm coughing it's because I, I just have uh, <laughs> a lot of wine in my throat. I didn't want to go down the wrong way. It's very, very good, by the way. I, uh, wow, I like it with that. I really do like it with that. And w once again, this this is a really nice little platter. This is a good platter for this wine. I really, really enjoy it. So uh, once again, this is what we're drinking. This is what we're drinking. The Luigi Giordano Langaroso. Langaroso. It's a 2019. Now, there is something that I wanted to add about this wine. <clears throat> There's, whoops, wrong camera. There we go. There's something I want to add about this wine that I didn't mention earlier, I think. And I've got to go look it up again. But from um, it, it had to do with the blend. This is actually not, um, this is a, a blend, a wine blend that has uh, a uh, Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo in it. But it also has a little bit, I think it's 90% i got to go find it again. I don't remember where it was. Okay, here it is. Uh, Wine Library had it on their website. It says 90% Nebbiolo and 10% Arnaise. Is that Arnaise? Arnaise? I don't know. I, you know. Some of these I can't pronounce very well. And I'm Italian, too. Yeah. I don't speak the language. <clears throat> I speak Rick, which is, is some form of English that sometimes is difficult to understand. <laughs> But uh, yeah, 90% Nebbiolo, 10% Arnais, Arnais, I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, th so it's not a 100% of any particular grape. It is a blend of two different grapes. That is what this wine is. Let's check the chats one more time and uh, go to Facebook. Whoops, uh, Facebook. I, I think I just cut off the uh, audio on Facebook. Hopefully it'll come back. There we go. And um, <clears throat> Twitch. Which is uh, kind of quiet. Everybody's kind of quiet tonight. You know, it's funny. Ever since we got on to daylight savings time, daylight, and, and, and here's the thing: because on the West Coast, what time is it? Ten forty now. West Coast time is seven forty. People are still eating dinner, and in the middle of the country, you know, it's still very early. Here, at ten o'clock here on the East Coast, okay. But when you start. Uh, I think if people are out and about on a Saturday night, they're coming in. We found that some people will start coming in on a Saturday night at about 11 o'clock, 11.30. And um, things start really kind of kicking up around 11.30, uh, midnight. And I've been doing two-hour two hour streams, and I, I just can't do that right now. I really can't do a two-hour stream. Uh, but it was okay before daylight savings time took effect because we were, you know, we're an hour later, so everybody's coming in and but the regular time and, and everything's cool and they can catch the stream. But when since we got onto daylight savings time, we had this last year too. This happened last year too. Uh, we, you know, we get on daylight savings time and I start at the same time at 10 p.m. and then people start wandering in. Uh, just about the time we're about to close down the, the, the stream and in and, and, and the show for the night because they've been out and about or, you know, their time, it's after dinner, their time on, on the West Coast or whatever. So uh, it's, it, uh, I did move the show to 11 o'clock at one point. At one point I had it going at 11 o'clock and that was fine, but then people were complaining after we went back. From daylight savings time to regular time, people were complaining that, oh, man, it's too late. I can't stay around too late. So I moved it back to 10, and, of course, that's fine until we get daylight savings time. So <laughs> I, I really would like – and this is one reason why I'd like for us to get off of just one – just get on one time zone and stay there. That's really – whether we get on regular – you know, the regular time or daylight time, just pick a time and just stay there. Come on, because all this moving around, it's just, uh, it's it's not fun for, for me doing my streams when I do on a Saturday night. It's uh, it's crazy. Anyway, so uh, it's just something we have to deal with, I guess. <laughs> all right, so we have, what's coming up now? We have birthdays. We have birthdays. I have a congratulatory toast. Uh, but that person is on the West Coast, so I don't know if they're even going to see it now. <laughs> but we'll do it anyway. So I want to give out uh, some birthday shout-outs. 
let's cue the fireworks fireworks please there we go and uh, I have a birthday I've got a couple of birthdays to those three three of them actually um, let me fill up the wine for that all right so the first birthday toast I want to give a shout out to my good friend David now I did toast him last week I toasted him last week because that was really almost a week early for his birthday. His birthday was yesterday. It's on the 9th, officially April 9th. But, uh, and everybody was wishing him happy birthday. I'm like, I did that about five days ago. <laughs> Six days ago. Anyway, so just in case you missed it, here's another birthday shout out to you, David. My good friend David Bennett and fellow podcaster. All around nice guy. And he is. Genuinely, I mean that. He's an all around great guy. And this is my good friend David Bennett. Your birthday, uh, I know it's belated now, but it wasn't last week. Anyway, happy, happy birthday to you. And may you have many, 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 many more. My good friend David Bennett. Um, I also have another birthday to toast. And this is going to be kind of the, this is coming up on Tuesday. It's a, is it Tuesday? Yeah, the 13th. This birthday is for a special young man, young man special to us all, to my whole family. And this is to my nephew, Ben, my young nephew, Ben, Ben Harms. His birthday is coming up on the 13th on Tuesday, April 13th. And I, I'm not going to forget you, Ben. I'm going to toast you. And this is from my, uh, my good nephew, Ben, very smart guy, very talented young man. And uh, happy, happy birthday. And may you have many, 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 many more. It's to my nephew, Ben. Really, really cool kid. Really cool kid. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing I haven't seen him for a while. I know he's grown up so much. The last time I saw them, it was uh, some years back, and he was still very young. But uh, I haven't actually seen him uh, in person lately, but I have seen lots of photos of him, and uh, he's growing every day, and, uh, well, he's just he's getting up there. He's, he's growing up. He's growing to a fine young man. And my sister Penny and my brother-in-law Tom should, they should be quite proud of him, as I am. I'm proud of him. Once again, happy birthday to you, Ben. We all have to get together again sometime soon, have a family reunion so we can catch up before Ben goes off to college and gets married and whatever. And I haven't seen him for 20 years. <laughs> so, by the way, Ben... Benjamin is uh, <clears throat> named after my dad, who passed away some years ago, 2016, is when he passed away. Uh, he is uh, the namesake of my, my dad. And uh, so uh, what do we have next here? Oh, uh, another birthday. One more birthday. This is for my good friend Mark. I have a lot of friends named Mark. This one's a good friend named Mark who, uh, what's it, something's clogged up here. I hope it didn't fall down in here again. Did it fall down? Let me see if it fell down. Maybe it's time to order another one of these. No, it's still there. <laughs> it's just clogged up a little bit. There we go. The wine is flowing now. Okay. That was the aerator, folks. So this birthday is for my good friend Mark, a fellow uh, co-worker and uh, Alum, uh, WFL alumni, fellow alumni at WFL Channel 35. As you know, I worked at WFL Channel 35 down in Orlando uh, years and years ago, and I worked with Mark, and he worked in production. He, he um, really smart guy, and I think I went out on a shoot or two with him. We, uh, I think the latter years, I think he and I went out on a shoot or two, uh, shot some 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 video for for the station. Uh, I think for commercial or pro promo or something. I think we were doing promos. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, Mark's a really cool guy. And his birthday is coming up. Your birthday, Mark, is coming up this coming Friday. It's the same sort of deal with David uh, Bennett. I, I toasted him last week, and his birthday was this past Friday. Mark, I'm getting the jump on everybody here, and I'm going to toast you early. I'm going to be the first to toast your birthday here. So Mark's birthday is this coming Friday, the 16th, April 16th. I want to, to toast you now. Happy, happy birthday, Mark, and may you have many more. It's from my good friend Mark Drury. Mark Drury. So uh, Mark and I worked together at WFL for many, many years. 
I haven't seen him for eons, but uh, one of these days, so we, we've been talking about uh, going down to Orlando sometime and everybody, uh, all the WFA alumni getting together and having a big, you know, big bash, get, big get together, reunion, that kind of thing, kind of a family reunions of sorts, because they were, for, you know, they are kind of a second family to me and have been. It was, it was like a second family. It really, really, really was. So um, I'm going to toast you again, Mark, just because I can. Happy birthday to Mark Drury. Okay, now I, there's one more uh, toast I want to give out. And this is a congratulatory toast. This is for my niece. Now, I, I don't think she's graduated yet, but she did have her graduation pictures taken. And she, she, uh, she looks smart. I'll have to say she looks smart and ready for graduation. She just had her graduate, you know, with the cap and gown and everything, had the, the, the class graduation pictures. And this is a congratula uh, congratulations or congratulations <laughs> to my niece, Amanda. Amanda Stepp, this is to you. Congratulations. It's from my niece, Amanda. I'll be toasting her again on graduation day, I'm sure. Uh, that's uh, we're quite we're all quite proud of you. We're all quite proud of you, Amanda. Okay, so I guess that does it for the the uh, birthdays and the toast and all that kind of stuff for right now. Oh, we've got well, we've got some national days to toast. But before we do that, I'm going to go back and this is once again we're drinking this Luigi Luigi Giordano Langaroso. It's a 2019 and it's 90 percent. And a 10% blend. So that's, uh, and then so far I'm liking this. I'm liking this very much. And, and I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking this wine because, I, without dinner, because everybody, I was doing show prep because, you know, it takes me a, a little while to get some show prep done to prepare for this, for the stream. And everybody was down there eating pizza and wings and all kinds of fun stuff and here I was doing my show notes so I didn't get to eat dinner with them I skipped dinner so after the the stream's over I'm going to go down and get a little dinner myself it's a little late in the evening but you know <laughs> better late than never right <laughs> that's not how the saying goes okay so uh, that's what we're drinking anyway I've got switch cameras here we go <laughs> All right, so I've got uh, some other things going on here. I want to tell you, oh, the National Days. That's what it is. I've got the National Days. Thanks. <laughs> I reminded myself. Uh, yeah, Antonio, uh, Tommy Antio says, it's a uh, me, Luigi. It's a me, Luigi. Yes, it's a me, Luigi. And it's not Mario. <laughs> not to be confused with Mario. It's, it's a me, Luigi. Luigi. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, I'm just checking the chats everywhere else here for just a moment. Okay, kind of. I'll just stick on Twitch for just a little bit. Where are we? Oh yes, National Days. Let's toast some National Days. To April 10th. Today's April 10th for another hour and nine minutes. So, uh, oh, we're gonna. This is gonna be. I'm gonna enjoy this toast because April 10th today, April 10th, 2021, is National Cinnamon Crescent Day. National Cinnamon Crescent Day. Who doesn't love a good cinnamon crescent? Some people don't like cinnamon, but uh, I don't know of anybody that does, uh, doesn't like cinnamon. I love cinnamon. My daughter loves cinnamon. We all love cinnamon. And uh, cinnamon crescent. Love cinnamon rolls. Cinnabons. Oh, cinnabons. You see this? I, you don't want to see this. <laughs> see this? That's from cinnamon buns and other things. Cinnabons and from other things. But Cinnabons, yeah. I first started gaining weight from Cinnabons. There's a story there. Uh, I think I told it before. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell it again sometime later. Beast on Gaming, you're up for a good story. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is to National Cinnamon Crescent Day. I'll drink to that. And it's also National Encourage a Young Writer Day. Encourage a Young Writer Day. I like to encourage young writers day. Uh, I like to encourage young writers. W-R-I-T-E-R-S, not R-I-D-E-R-S. Writers. Young writers. I'll drink to that. 
April 10th is also National Farm Animals Day. Farm animals have their own day. Can you believe that? How come I don't have my own day? I'm, I'm, aren't, aren't, I'm not as good as a farm animal. I don't have my own day. But farm animals have a day. Farm animals have their own day. Okay, that's fine. I just drank to that. It's also National Siblings Day. National Siblings Day. You know, I, I need to do something else for this. I need. There we go. Let's have that background for it. Okay. National Siblings Day. Uh, my siblings are pretty much international now. I have... Uh, they're all over. They're spread all over the U.S. I have a, uh, I have a, another brother down south. I think somewhere. I'm not really sure where he is at the moment. I have a, a brother in uh, Japan. He lives in Japan with his wife. I have uh, a sister in Texas. And I have another sister in California. Kind of spread out all over. You know, we're all over the place. We're everywhere. Our, our families, our families are everywhere. Our family is everywhere. <laughs> All over. Can't get rid of us, huh? Anyway, here's the National Siblings Day. I love my siblings. I do love my siblings. And uh, uh, when we were younger, we were younger. There were six of us. Six. Six of us. There were six of us in, in our family. My my parents had six kids. And uh, my mother, there was a thing where when we were little, we were small. Uh, the way that my mother kept us in check and kept us all together, she, because she was driving, she'd drive everywhere. She'd have to drive everybody everywhere. She'd have to go do all the shopping and all that kind of stuff, as, as mothers often do. And whenever we go to the store, because there were six of us, and it was hard to keep everybody corralled because, you know, you had six kids, young kids running, wanting to run everywhere and do everything and, and create havoc, what have you. Um, so she made it a rule. She trained us. She really trained us well. She trained us to walk behind her. We had to stay, when we went to the supermarket or we went to the, to the department store or whatever, we had, this is embarrassing. We, you remember my mind, uh, uh, Kathy, you remember my mom. <laughs> She's a really sweet lady, smart lady too, very, very smart. So when she, when we went to the store uh, and she'd be up front, you know, she'd be pushing the shopping cart or whatever, but she, we were, it was a rule. It was a rule that we had to stay right behind her. We had to stay right behind her in pecking order. And what I mean by in pecking order, I mean in order of our birth. <laughs> we had to stand behind her and follow her everywhere in the store. Uh, I'm not making this up. No, I, this is true. True story. Um, we had to follow her, stay right behind her, wherever she went, all over the store with her cart. And sometimes even if she didn't have a card, we had to walk behind her in a single file, in single file, in a straight line, in order of our birth. So uh, I would be first, and my sister Gina would be next after me, and my brother Mike would be after her, and my brother Tony would be after uh, Mike, and then uh, my sister Penny would be after Tony, and then my uh, brother Paul would bring up the rear so they're all six of us, and it'd be like a chain. So it was like if you're watching my mom sh going shopping, it was like she had this long tail. You know, it's just this long tail, all the kids following her around. Uh, not always in a straight line exactly, but, you know, it was pretty, pretty straight. And we had to do that. And people would look at her and marvel at her and say, wow, this lady has it under control. She's, she's got it. She, she's, she's got it together. She does. She's got it all under control. <laughs> At least until we got home, but that's a yeah. Anyway, so um, that was how we did it. But here's the National Siblings Day to all my siblings everywhere, and to all siblings everywhere. Happy National Siblings Day. I'll drink to that. Okay, uh, let me check the chat one more time before we continue on. And uh, very quiet. Yeah, it's very quiet tonight. Okay, so what do we have here for national days? Tomorrow is the 11th, April 11th. All day today. I mean, all day tomorrow. <sighs> Maybe I should stop drinking now. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you know, it's only 13% alcohol by volume, folks. And I haven't had dinner yet. Don't.
drink on an empty stomach. That's that's a cardinal rule. Well, it's a it's a rule anyway. April 11th is National Barbershop Quartet Day. I like to listen to barbershop quartets. You know, the songs where they do the the uh, the songs and, and, and mostly you know, like in acapella. And it's, it's a really cool barbershop quartets. I like uh, good barbershop. You know, at Disney years ago, at Disney and my, my good friend Ed Ed Anthony. He's uh, he's he's not in the chat right now, but uh, we had at Disney they had a, a barbershop quartet going on that they would uh, that would perform all over the parks. And it was always fun. It was always fun to, to watch them and listen to them. It was pretty cool. And they'd have the whole gear, too, you know, with the striped uh, outfits and everything and the hats and the whole bit, you know, little neckties and, and you know, and, uh, you know the old-time neckties and, and, uh, and doing their a cappella barbershop quartet thing. And uh, it was always fun. It was always a lot of fun. Anyway, here's to National Barbershop Quartet Day. It's also, tomorrow's also National Cheese Fondue Day. I love cheese, and I love fondue, and I like a good cheese fondue. So here's a National Cheese Fondue Day. <coughs> oh, check this out. Tomorrow is, I guess what tomorrow is. Tomorrow is also National National 8-Track Tape Day. Yes, it is National 8-Track. See, I can't get my own day. But some old technology that nobody ever uses anymore and hasn't for eons gets its own day. National. Ah, I must be really, really low on the totem pole here. <laughs> National 8-track tape day. Yes, I have stories about 8-track tapes. Used to. Listen to eight track tapes. Yes, I even had a stereo with an eight track ta tape deck in it, and I had a few eight track tapes. But I didn't use it that much actually. Mostly played them. I actually had a pretty cool stereo console, and it had a phonograph, and it, this was in my apartment. I had it, um, a phonograph, and it had uh, I think it had a cassette tape deck in there too. It had a radio, AM FM radio, and it had an eight track tape deck, and it was pretty cool looking. It looked like a, a real console. And when I say console, I'm talking about like a space AG kind of console. It was really cool. And then there was a place in the bottom to store albums, records, things like that. And um, I had it in my apartment, and um, <clears throat> one of uh, my uh, somebody was staying at me. One, uh, somebody was staying at me for a little while, staying with me for a little while in the apartment. Uh, stole one of the knobs off of it and had to go back and retrieve it. I think I got it back. But uh, at one point, oh, funny story here. Okay, here's a story. You want to hear a story? Okay. Uh, so when I moved out of my apartment and moved into um, to a house, I didn't really have room for this thing because it was, it was pretty big. It was, it was pretty wide. It was pretty big. And it was, real, it was real thin like this, but it was really wide. And I didn't really have a lot of room to, to store it anywhere, but I had to... to uh, move from my apartment to a, to a house. So I, I tried to figure out what to do with it. At the same time, when uh, when I was working at WFL, we had uh, our film, I worked in the film department. You know, we, we edited film for TV, the TV shows for that aired on TV, and we put in the commercial breaks, and we'd edit the film for time, take out chunks and things like that. And we did it on 16, in those days we did it on 16 millimeter film. Now, then it moved to, to videotape uh, uh, later on. But in those days, we were editing on 16-millimeter films. So we had a dark room uh, with, with uh, these machines, these editing machines, and with actually some of us started off on, on uh, these, these uh, classic old editing bays with splicers and, 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 and things like that, really, really old, old editing equipment. And... Um, Fridays we were Fridays was a little bit easier. We we'd get most of our work done during the rest of the week, and the Fridays we could kick back a little bit, you know, just kick back and relax a little. And um, we were known for being kind of like renegades in the, in the station because uh, you know, people didn't go up to the, the. We were on the second floor. We had our own room, and we kept it locked most of the time. The three of us. It was uh, Pete Moltak and Jeff Pierce and myself. And we, we would be in that room, and <clears throat> we kept it locked most of the time. People would knock on the door if they wanted to come in, uh, and if, if we decided to let them in. <laughs> but most of the time, most people stayed, unless, you know, they were uh, people that we just kind of let in that were sort of like, 
you know, they were really cool to let in. But most of the time we kept it locked and, and most people didn't even want to come up there to bother us anyway. Most people just kind of want to stay away from the film department. <laughs> but um, uh, at one point we were, uh, we had some space. We had some space in the office and I was clearing out my apartment <clears throat> and I had this huge stereo console and I had these speakers. These speakers were were about as high as that, Oh, well, not quite. It was about as high as the desk, actually. About 30, 30 inch speakers, cabinets, the huge speakers, stereo. So uh, one day, while everybody was out to lunch, <clears throat> uh, we we went over to my apartment and we uh, took the stereo system and we moved it up into our office where nobody was looking. And everybody was out to lunch doing their thing. It was a Friday, so we snuck it up there. We snuck it into our office. And we put it in our office, and there it stayed. And um, the first time anybody found it, well, it didn't take them long to find out we had it. <laughs> we, but the, the way they found out we had it was uh, because, because they heard it. <laughs> and the thing is that our, our, uh, the, the general manager of the station, his office was right underneath ours downstairs it was right underneath our office and we had placed the speakers on either side of the room right over his office so when we'd start playing like we had we'd play stuff like we'd play sticks and we played jethro tall and we played all kinds of stuff you know was going on the day and then we'd crank it up and especially on a friday after we'd have a, a two or three margarita lunch we went back uh, to station to not do anything and so we'd crank this thing up and you know and, and blast it out and people would knock on their door saying, hey, can you turn that down a little bit? Uh, nobody asked us to get rid of it. Well, okay, I think some one person said, okay, you got to turn it down or you got to get rid of it. That was the warning. <clears throat> so we turned it down a little bit, but we didn't get rid of it. Not until later on when I when I moved uh, again, then we, we took it out and got rid of uh, Well, we moved the station. I think when the station moved to Lake Mary, that's when we were cleaning out and they said, okay, well, we got to get rid of this thing. But uh, but we had the thing up there. I think we we were uh, we were kind of the mavericks of the station at the time. We had kind of had a reputation for that. Anyway, so um, those were the early days of WFL. It was still independent before it came a Fox affiliate. And once it became a Fox affiliate, it, we had to kind of uh, we kind of had to straighten things up a little bit. <laughs> But uh, in those early days when it was still in Indy, that we got away with a lot of stuff. We we got away with a lot of stuff. Anyway, so um, that is uh, for uh, this is for National Eight Track Day, and I went off on a tangent because that's what I do on the Stream of Consciousness show, known as Drink with Rick, on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. April eleventh tomorrow is also National Pet Day. National Pet Day. Do you have a pet? We have a pet. We have some some pets. Uh, we've had a lot of pets. I've had a lot of pets. And you know, when I was a kid, I had at one point when I was a kid, when I was living at home with my parents, we had. And I've told you the goat story. I've told you the goat story before. Yeah, when I went to work at uh, at uh, Disney, and and my dad stopped and bought a pair of goats. Um, if if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it. I don't want to tell you again tonight, but uh, maybe another time. Anyway, so at one point we had, we lived in a, okay, we had at one point 11 chickens, three goats, two cats, and a dog. And I think at one point we had a rabbit at one point, if I remember right. I don't know if the rabbit was on loan or we were watching the rabbit for somebody, but we had, we had a real menagerie. And you're thinking... Oh, yeah, the, you just lived on a farm. No, we didn't. We lived in the middle of a subdivision. <laughs> we lived in a subdivision in in, uh, in the middle of Winter Park, Florida. And Winter Park, for those of you who are familiar with Winter Park, it is, uh, Winter Park is kind of like a classy address, you know, Winter Park, Florida. And uh, that's where they, they have the Winter Park mansions and, the, and you know, the, 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 the um, brick, streets and things like that and we didn't live in that part of it but, it but we still lived in a nice area in winter park and uh, but we lived in a subdivision we didn't live on a farm and uh that that was our menagerie at the time so <clears throat> yeah <laughs> we had a lot of pets 
I had a lot of pets in my my day. We have pets now. We have my uh, my dog has his son uh, has his son. I, okay, I've I've had enough of this, haven't I? Right. No. Uh, my dog. It's only thirteen percent alcohol by volume of poke. My son has <laughs> my son, <laughs> my son has a dog. His name is Cosmo. I've showed him to you many times before. He's a cute dog. So we have Cosmo. Uh, my daughter has some fish now. She has some fish. She has uh, two goldfish. I think she named them Cheddar and Pudge. And the goldfish, um, about a, a couple weeks after she got them, as goldfish do, they had babies. And now she's got a whole bunch of little babies she's taking care of. So she's the fish mama. So, uh, oh yeah, we have some some we have some pets. Here's a national pet day. I'll drink to that. Pets are great, aren't they? They are. And April 11th, it's also National Submarine Day. National Submarine Day. Do you own a submarine? I don't, but it's National Submarine Day. So for those who do, happy National Submarine Day. I'll drink to that. Okay, that does it for the National Days. I think we've done it for the National Days, okay? This is what we're drinking once again. The Luigi Giordano Langaroso 2019. 90% something and 10% something else. I don't remember right off hand. <laughs> I'm going to go back and look it up in a moment. Okay, let me look it up. I'm going to look it up. What was it again? I can't remember. It was 10% uh, ne uh, ne Nebbiolo and 10% Arnais. Not to be confused with uh, Arnais... As uh, as in James Arness, who was uh, Matt Dillon, Marshall Matt Dillon of Gunsmoke. <laughs> when I think Arnais, I think Matt. Uh, Matt uh, yeah, I think of uh, James Arness. By the way, that's a, a trivia. I was talking about trivia questions uh, uh, earlier. I think I was going to mention uh, trivia questions. There was uh, my my wife and I've been watching Mission Impossible. And we've been watching the old, the old episodes, the TV show, the classic TV show, which is very good, actually. And um, a little dated by today's standards, but still fun to watch. And um, one, of the trivia, one of the things I was going to mention, well, I can't remember what the first thing I was going to mention was, but now I've got another trivia thing to mention. Did you know that I did not know this, but I looked it up. Peter Graves, who played um, Jim Phelps, the the leader of the IMF force. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. Uh, yeah, you know that, Mr. Phelps. <clears throat> Good luck, Jim. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yes, uh, Jim Phelps, who's played by Peter Graves, who I always liked. I I really he was one actor that I really really always liked. Everything that I ever saw him in, and of course I knew him from Mission. I knew him. I didn't know him personally, but from Mission Impossible. But he was in so many other things. And yeah, besides Airplane. Okay, yeah, he was in Airplane. But uh, I'm talking about other shows that he was in, other movies and things like that. It's always fun to just kind of like watch a f an old film or an old TV show. And then and, like he shows up in it. And it's always kind of cool. Anyway, Peter Graves, I did not know this. Peter Graves is the was the brother of James Arness. You know, James Arness, who was... Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke, you know, Gunsmoke, starring James Arness as Matt Dillon. Yeah, that Matt Dillon, that James Arness. He was James Arness's brother. I did not know that. Very, very interesting. And now you know it, too. Of course, if you knew it already, then it's okay. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I've, I've 13% alcohol by volume, folks. Now, I'm looking at the wrong camera. I was looking at the wrong camera. I know. I'm looking at... i got to use these cameras. Okay, sorry about that, folks. I apologize. I'm here. I'm, I'm looking over there when I should be looking over... No, I'm looking over here when I should have been looking over there. I'm still getting the hang of these cameras. <laughs> One of these days, by the time this series ends, I'll, 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 figure, I'll figure it out, right? That's how it usually works. <laughs> Don't end the series. No, end it now. End it now. Uh, we're not going to do a poll on that tonight, folks, okay? So Tom Antio says he was in Airplane with Leslie Nielsen. Yes, he was. Peter Graves was in Airplane with Leslie Nielsen. He played the pilot. 
Uh, the pilot who one of the, there was a pilot and a co-pilot, and they both got sick from the fish. They had the fish, um, but um, yeah, he was in airplane with Leslie Nielsen and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, yes, didn't know that. Tom has not seen Airplane yet. It's an interesting, it's a funny movie, Airplane. A little body, a lot body, but uh, but but funny. Cheese Savoya says, Cheese Fun Do. Fun Do, Cheese Fun Do. Cheese says, Cheese Fun Do. That, that's your Fun Do? Oh, Fondue, right, as in Fondue, but it's Fun I uh, Got it, got it, okay. Got, got it, very cool, very clever. See, she's been hanging around for me for... She's been hanging around with me for 27 years, so the dad jokes are starting to rub off on her a little bit. Okay, so what do we got left here? Okay, we got a couple things. A couple things I want to tell you about because we're, we're going to close it early because uh, there's not a whole lot going on. I want to give away a book. I want to give away a book to some. Uh, Beast on Gaming, you've won something in the past, haven't you? You've won. I think you won a dad joke book or something. Yes, I think so. If you're still watching. Anyone else watching that uh, is not speaking up, speak up. You have a chance to win an infinite giving book. All right, let me show this to you just for a moment. I really want to give one of these away tonight. I really don't. I really do want to give one. Okay, this is what we're giving away. This is a book that I reviewed on the show last week. It's called Infinite Giving, The Principles of Giver's Gain by uh, Ivan Misner. Ph.D., Greg Davies, and Julian Lewis. Now, this book is interesting because now it is kind of a book about it coming from the point of view of, of business networks, business networking. And if you're not sure what that is, don't worry about it. I'm not going to explain it right now. But um, And I, I did belong to a business uh, network at one point uh, years and years ago. wasn't in it for too long. It's very expensive, and I didn't get much out of it. And uh, uh, I... I, I I sent leads to other people, but I never really got any leads to speak of, and, and it was just kind of a, it was, I don't know, it was, it, it was really more about, uh, a lot of these leads groups are kind of all about, uh, you know, what we, everybody can get from everybody else, not so much giving. This is different because this is kind of a leads group that it, it talks about giving, uh, using a giving approach instead of a get approach to that. But this isn't, the thing about this book is that it's not, um, just to apply to business networks. This applies to everyday life. This applies to everything. When you uh, take a giving approach, uh, uh, a basic principle of give and uh, give and you shall receive, that kind of thing, it uses that approach in everyday life. You can apply these principles to your life every day and giving to others without expecting something in return. And you do that giving and, you know, the pay it forward kind of thing. This is a really good book. It's a short read. It only takes a couple hours to read it. But it is a really good book. And I enjoyed it. And I, I want to take I'm, – I'm, I try to take advantage of, of these – I try to make the use of these principles. And uh, I want to try this principle out tonight. I want to try to give one away. If you'll let me. <laughs> If you'll let me. Okay. If not, next week. Also, you can, of course, you can, of course, uh, email me. Email me at rick at savoymedia.com, rick at savoymedia.com, and just say hi. Give me any feedback at all. Say you'd like to win one of the books, and uh, I'll put your name in the pot, and maybe we can draw a winner for the book because I want to give a couple of these away this month. I've got some here on order. I want to give them away. Okay. That's what I would like to do. So, um, where was I? Anyway, I've got one more thing, oh, a couple more things I want to cover. Uh, one thing is that, uh, when, oh, uh, speaking of winning stuff, you can win a bottle of wine. Let me tell you about this. Uh, he's been doing this, uh, Frank from pick a wine, how to pick a wine.com. Uh, I, I've, uh, I've been following him along for the last year or so, and I, Frank is giving away a bottle of wine for April. Now, he did this in February, and he did this in March. I didn't win. Maybe I wasn't, uh, maybe I didn't, I was disqualified because I drink so much. I got this show or whatever, I don't know. But I'm going to pass along uh, this. I told him I would. 
Uh, he is doing, he did one in Mar February, did one in March. He's doing one for this month in April. He's giving away a free bottle of wine. Now, you have to do, there are a few things you have to do, and I'm, I'm going to explain them to you real quick. But if you go to howtopickawine.com, win a free bottle of wine, or, or just look up, do a search, and look for win a free bottle of wine, you'll come up with the post, and they're, they're, they're the, there's the criteria. Uh, I'm going to read this from his website. Uh, you got to do them all to get four entries. So you, you do one, I guess you get one entry, but if you give, uh, do more, you get four entries. I think that's my understanding of this. You, if you join his Facebook group, How to Pick a Wine, and Italian Wines, Food, Travel, and Culture. So he has two groups there. He's got How to Pick a Wine, and he has a group called Italian Wines, Food, Travel, and Culture. Uh, so you, you join the groups. Follow him on Instagram at How to Pick a Wine. Follow him on Instagram. You can uh, scroll down uh, the page on the, the website, on his website, on the, the blog for Win a Free Bottle of Wine, April 2021 giveaway. You scroll down to the bottom of that blog post and uh, subscribe to his blog via email if you subscribe to his blog. Uh, or if, And if you hit like on his post, uh, if you hit uh, like on his post, I guess on, on uh on uh, Facebook, on his Facebook pages, uh, on his website, uh, then you get four entries to uh, to win a bottle of wine. Now, if you're already doing all that, he says that you can send him a private message on Facebook and your name, and he'll enter you into the drawing, into the contest. So if you do that, that that's, uh, that's cool. It's a free bottle of wine. You can win a free bottle of wine, folks. Who doesn't want to win a free bottle of wine? Okay, even if you don't like wine, well, you, you, you've got to be of age, okay? You've got to be 21 or older to, to qualify, okay? Uh, if you're under 21, that, 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 that's not for you. But if you're, under, if you're 21 or older, please put your name in there and see if you can win a free bottle of wine. And when you do, when you do contact Fr uh, Frank, when you do contact him, uh, tell him I sent you. Say, hey, Rick from Drink With Rick sent me over. I would really appreciate that. Now, it doesn't get me anything, okay? I'm not being paid for this. He's not paying for me for this. Uh, I'm, I'm just doing this for him, okay, just to help him out, just to help him out. But it, uh, I'm not getting anything out of this at all. I, I haven't gotten any free wine, I'll tell you that much. Frank. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> maybe. Uh, so just just tell him uh, Rick would, Rick from Drink with Rick sent me over and, and – uh, He'll put your name in the hat, and he'll appreciate it. And I will appreciate it. We'll all appreciate it. It's a win-win for everybody. Okay? So uh, go, out, go over there and, and, and check it out. All right, I got one more thing here for you. Let me check uh, the chats one more time, see what's going on. Anything happening in the chats? Cheese fondue. All right. One more thing. Uh, reminder. <clears throat> It's spring. Spring has sprung. A lot of storms. We were promised some storms today. I didn't really see them over here much, but that's okay. That's a good thing. I don't want any big storms. But if you, you've got some storms, there have been some storms going across the country, please get a weather radio. Please go to ready.gov, R-E-A-D-Y.gov. Get a weather radio, okay? That's very important. Get a weather radio. And... Follow the other instructions at ready.gov to put yourself together a, an emergency kit, an emergency kit for weather, for tornadoes, for hurricanes, for flooding, for whatever it is, earthquakes, whatever. They've got instructions. They have instructions at ready.gov on how to put together an emergency uh, kit, an emergency survival kit. Third item on the list is a weather radio. Uh, fifth or sixth item, uh, one of the other items on the list is a two-way radio. Because when the when everything hits the fan, so to speak, the cell towers go down, radios are going to be your only source of, uh, uh, your only option for communications at that point. So, But at the very least, get a weather radio. Go to buy2wayradios.com. Okay? Go to buy2wayradios.com. Get a weather radio or any other kind of radio when you want to get. Use the promo code Wine Show. When you use that promo code Wine Show, W I N E S H O W, use the promo code Wine Show at checkout. You can save an additional 5% on 
off your order. And it doesn't apply to just the weather radios. It applies to any of the radios, any of the products on the website, actually. The, uh, any of the accessories out there. they got CB radios and FRS, GMRS radios, uh, ham radios, business radios, all kinds of radios. Okay, go to buy2wayradios.com. Get your weather radio and whatever other uh, radio gear you need. Use the promo code Wine Show. Save 5% off the entire order and you're all good. And get that emergency kit put together. And for full disclosure, I am the product manager for buy2wayradios.com. I'm not being paid any extra for this. This is just something I'm doing. Boss says, hey, give them the promo code. So that's what I'm doing. And this is for you. This is for you, for your benefit, okay? Uh, so go to buy 2 and get your weather radio. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all I've got for tonight. And we're going to give this a short summary here, unless I have any other, uh, any other comments from the chat. And it's pretty quiet in the chats tonight. See, I knew this was going to happen. As soon as... As soon as we get on daylight savings time, that's 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 what happens, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not the way it works. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> this is what we've been drinking. The Luigi. Luigi is Giordano Langarosso 2019. 90% of something and 10% of something else. i got to look it up again. Oh, I, just have to I can't remember it. It's 10, 90% ne Nebbiolo and 10% Arnais. And they are co-fermented. That's the interesting thing. They are co-fermented according to winelibrary.com. Um, so that is very, very interesting. That they're co-fermented. Anyway, it is a 13% alcohol by volume. 13% alcohol by volume, or so it says. Uh, it's a very nice. It's a cherry aroma. It's very strong cherry. This is very strong cherry and almost like a almost like a maraschino cherry in it. You know, a very distinctive cherry flavor there. It's uh, some some raspberry. It's a little bit of raspberry mixed in there. It's a little little uh, little smoky, a little leathery. But uh, it really comes out more when you have it with steak, with a steak that's been grilled, and that's when the, the leathery taste comes out. A little bit of, a little slight mushroom taste. It has a nice long finish. There's a very nice long finish on it. Rather enjoyed it, but it's light. You can see it's a beautiful ruby color. This is a beautiful, and, and you know how I show these things up in the, in the lights here, in the studio lights? Usually they're too dark to really see. But look at that. That is a beautiful, beautiful ruby Red color. Uh, it's, it's just uh, that's what got me with this wine. When I first saw this wine, it's, it's like it's a beautiful ruby red color. And um, I like that. And it tastes really. Now, they say it's been rated as being fairly bold. I'm not really getting that. I, it's kind of medium and it is kind of a, a it has a, a light body to it, in my opinion. It's kind of a light bodied wine. It is tannic. It's, it's fairly tannic. It's very dry. It's very if you, if you don't like dry wines, you may not care for this. But you know what? Even if you don't like a dry wine, you, you might like this one because it is uh, it is kind of a refreshing, kind of light, refreshing taste to it. I think you might like it. You might like it. I I, I do, <laughs> and it went pretty well with pretty much everything that we had here. That we had. Uh, the steak, this is the T-bone steak. We had the pizza with uh, beef on it. We have pizza with black olives. We had the cheddar cheese. It went nicely with cheddar cheese. And it really, really well with the Toscano with the, the creamy Syrah. Uh, not a big surprise there. And, of course, as always, it went very well with the Trader Joe's Double Cream Gouda. And it also went really well, brought out kind of the vinegary taste, and it went really well with this salad here that my lovely wife, Chi, made. Very nice salad, by the way. So that's my final review on this. I like it. I recommend it. $15.99 is what it was. It $15.99? I think it was. $14.99. $14.99 is what I paid for it at winestore-online.com. 
I think that's really a regular price, $14.99. And it, it averages about $20 a bottle everywhere else. Uh, and Wine Store will ship. Wine Store will ship to a lot of states. So uh, if you want to get it from Wine Store, you can do it. And once again, I am not being paid by Wine Store to say that. They're just my friends over there. Uh, and I just, just enjoy buying wine from them. And they, they've made some really, really good recommendations. And I know Matt over there, uh, Matt, and the, uh, the, uh, the, Matt and the crew, uh, are really, really nice folks. And they'll take really good care of you. So I think that'll close it up. Unless someone else has something else to say, I really want to give away this, this uh, copy of this book. I really do. Anybody have any, uh, anybody want to win a copy of this book? Say aye. Who wants to win a copy of this book? I will give one away tonight. Uh, Tom Antio, you're not uh, you're not in the running for that. You're a mod. It says uh, velvet red, velvet red. I think it's really more of a ruby red, to be honest. But uh, yeah, it's a little velvety. Um, anything else going on? And last call, last call. Who wants to win one of these books? No. Okay. All right, well, maybe we'll try it again for next week then. We'll try it again for next week and see if we can give away a book next week. I really wanted to give away one this week. But if, once again, if you leave your name, contact me, Rick, at SavoyaMedia.com. Leave your name there and say, I want to win a book. And then we'll put your name in the hat and then we can uh, do a drawing next week. And uh, somebody will win a book. I'm going to give away a book this month. I want to give away a couple of books this month. Infinite Giving and maybe the 500 plus dad jokes books. Those are those are fun. Uh, all right, so I guess that does it for tonight. I want to thank everyone for being here with me tonight. I want to thank uh, Sheridan and Kathy. Thank you for being here with me. I hope you're still here. Uh, if you're not, I can understand. <laughs> Would I watch me for two hours too? I don't know. Uh, okay, self-deprecating humor, uh, humor there. That's what I do. Tommy in here says, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, you can't win this one, Tom. Uh, maybe I'll give you one anyway. You should read this anyway. I'm, I'll probably just give you one anyway. Uh, anything else going on on Twitter? No, I want to thank everybody who joined me tonight uh, on uh, Twitch. Uh, of course, uh, Facebook, I didn't mention uh, Kathy and Sherrod, my lovely wife, Chi, and on Twitch... Uh, Tom Antio, and who else was here? Oh, Beast on Gaming, thank you for being here with me tonight. I really, really do appreciate it. I do appreciate each and every one of you. And everyone watching on YouTube, we have folks watching on YouTube, which is quiet. You didn't win a book tonight. <laughs> but you know what? Put your, put your, put your name in right there. Put your name in there. Send it to Rick at SavoyMedia.com. Uh, and and uh, I'll put you in the hat to win a book. I want to give these away. I do. All right, enough harping on that. Okay. Anyway, thank you for being here with me tonight. I want to ask that everyone, I, uh, please, I beg of everyone, please do not drink and drive. Okay? Drink in the comfort of your home, your apartment, your hotel room, wherever you are. Please do not drink and drive. Call an Uber, call a Lyft, call a cab if you have to. Call a friend. If you can't, if you can't get a ride home, just just stay where you are. Okay, please don't 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 drink and drive because that's that's just bad. It never ends well. Please do not text and drive because that's not good either. That's very bad. Because I want you all to have a great week. But most of all, I want you to have a safe week, and I mean that. I want you to have a safe week. So you can all join me here again next week on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. And we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.